Good evening, everybody. It is Steve with Real Progressives. It's very late, but a lot going on. And the reason why a lot's going on is because it's everything but what we need to go on. Right now, you've got Israel apparently taking shots at Syria. Right now, you've got a president who has made it so that all we can do is focus on his buffoonery. We've got a Democratic Party uh, that cannot get out of its own way, that is still trying to block progressives. We have got people all over the place doing everything to literally suck the life out of every human being in this country. No joke, every person in this country that gives a shit has to pay the price for giving a shit. And one by one, you see people checking out of the game or or you see them flip over to the idea of burning it down. It's either totally checking out or we got to burn it down. And because everybody's either looking for a savior in electoral politics or because they've literally lost their way and they're so burned out and so depressed and so defeated, they're just checking out of the game completely. This whole election stuff, <clears throat> you're looking... You see nonstop the Democrats stacking the deck over and over again with these corporate crap, crappy, crappy candidates. And honestly, I'm not seeing the kind of push, I'm not seeing the kind of leverage the people need to be able to make a dent in that. Not living in electoral politics anyway. I don't know if you understand that there is power to be had outside of the duopoly. And I'm not just talking about third parties here. Let me be real clear. Third parties, they don't have a lot of chance right now to win. They really don't. But that's not the point. It, it, it's not going to be about winning elections right now. In my opinion, what it's about is the people coming together and understanding what it is they're really fighting about. Really understanding what it is they're fighting for. Unfortunately, you've got a lot of people that are really, really freaking angry. And angry people do stupid stuff, okay? Anger is a great motivator. Anger can get you certain places that peace and love can't. But anger in and of itself is not an asset. Anger by itself is just another thing to like pouring kerosene on a fire. It just makes it get bigger. It just makes it burn brighter. It doesn't actually do anything for you in this case. In this case, we need cooler heads. In this case, we need people, the people, the, the people, people, us people, need to be united outside of this stuff. I don't care who you vote for. I really don't. I'm not worried about your vote. I'm not. I'll be honest with you. I could care less about the elections right now because I just don't see, I just don't see candidates that are strong enough. There are a few of them. But I don't see many candidates out there that really know what the hell they're doing. They maybe say some of the right things, but they don't know how to write legislation. They don't know how to do a lot of stuff. So really, even if you vote them in, the pressure has got to come from the people outside of the electoral system. We have got to really know what we're fighting for and know what we're standing for, no matter who is elected, even if the elections are a sham. I don't know if this makes any sense at all to you. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to find hope, stop looking at the electoral system. If you want to find hope, stop looking to social media for the latest angry person that says some cute little phrase telling you what's wrong, but not actually telling you how to fix it, okay? I, I, I look and it's like I've come to grips that most of the people are happy when people are just angry and asking angry questions, but they don't want anybody to have an answer. They don't want anybody to actually have the solutions, okay? When somebody says they have a solution, all anybody wants to do is throw rocks at them and yell at them and scream at them and it's just whatever. All they want to do is tell you how your solution won't work, how it's wrong, how, you know, what about this, what about it? right now. Our only chance of really making a change, and I hope you hear me, I couldn't be more serious about this. I'm not telling you not to vote. I'm telling you to vote. I'm telling you to vote for whoever you think is the right candidate. I'm not even here to tell you who to vote for. 
Okay? I'm not telling you what party to vote for. I'm telling you to vote your conscience. Whatever you do, that one minute, that 30-second spot where you're sitting there in the booth, you put your card in and you do whatever it is you do, knock yourself out. Once you leave that voting booth, though, once you get outside into public, you need to start worrying about what it is we want society to look like. You need to start worrying about what it is that you think society should be. Not with all the people telling you it's impossible. Not with all the people telling you not to think about those things. Not with them downplaying your dreams and desires. But think about what you really want it to be. And the more you think and the more you talk, the more we change society from the ground up. You keep looking at the top to hopefully trickle down. You want trickle down politics. You want trickle down, you hate trickle down economics, but you love trickle down politics. You want your Bernie Sanders to tell you everything's going to be okay. You want your Jill Stein to tell you everything's going to be okay. You want to vote for some Congress critter that's going to tell you everything's going to be okay. But the reality is, is that they can't tell you that, or they could tell you that, but it wouldn't matter because they're liars. Most of them are liars. Most of them are politicians before they're people even. So it really comes down to you and I, right? You and I. And what it comes down to is knowing what the hell we want. I'll tell you something. Politicians are creatures of the vote. They want to get reelected. Okay, period. They do. And even if there's money backing them, even if there's all these other corrupt practices about them, the people, when they are coming together, and I mean really coming together, folks, not like a randy band of people 50 strong walking down the street with a couple handmade signs. I'm talking about really coming together. Really, really coming together. Party be damned. All this green enter. No, you got to vote green, period. There's no other way to vote. And all the vote blue no matter whose. There's no other way. You just got to vote blue. That stuff means exactly dick. We need the people, period. Because the Green Party, trust me, trust me, the way the Green Party is right now, if they ran the show, we would be screwed there too because they are recalcitrant and refuse to learn economics. They refuse. Stubborn as hell. Okay? They're ideologically driven. And therefore, they would screw the pooch just as bad. I'm telling you. And then over here in the duopoly, you've got these lying sacks of dung. They're just selling out. They're just doing whatever they do. The party of one. It's up to us. I'm telling you right now, stop looking at parties. Because the parties, all they do is tell you not to vote green or not to vote blue and whatever. What? Oh, you can't be a progressive if you vote this way. No, I'm telling you right now, you can't be a progressive if you don't know why you're a progressive. If you think that chasing stories around and you fucking ride around in your little I'm in the blue party, I'm in the green party, I'm in the this party. If you think that makes you a progressive, I'm telling you right now, you are 1000% incorrect. 1000% incorrect. The thing that makes you a progressive is where your head's at, where your heart's at, and where you put your energies. And if you're all about party building, remember this. There are parties that are growing on the outside that are not mature yet. They're not running candidates yet, but they're trying. What are you going to do? You're going to wait till they have candidates or are you going to vote for somebody? You got to build the momentum here amongst the people. The people have to know what it is they stand for. And I'm telling you right now, the wrong people within the progressive movement, the wrong people are raising their hands saying, I know how to lead us down the road. Many of them are not in any way, shape, or form actually committed and ready to lead that kind of charge. And it's a real shame because right now is a time when progressives need the most hope. They need strong leaders stepping out and saying, I will point the direction. Follow me. Come follow me. Let's do this, guys. Let's lock arms and let's do this together. But they're not. They're cowards. They're worrying about, am I going to get enough votes? What if I say this wrong? What if I say that wrong? These people over here won't like me. This is why it's got to be outside the electoral system. 
This is why we've got to be talking beyond that. Folks, every lie, think about this, every single lie that you hear during these debates, during these <laughs> elections, these campaigns, every one of these debates you hear, you hear people talking about things as if it's fact, and they're lying, and then they get fact-checked, and you realize the fact-checkers are lying too, and you realize the whole thing's a goddamn sham. So it really comes down to us paying attention to what we need and then uniting outside the parties and making it happen, pushing it, taking over, going to town halls. I've said this for years now. If anybody listens to me at all, <laughs> I'm telling you, we got to go to town halls. We got to raise signs and say, no, we know what you're doing. We got to go to their offices. We got to occupy the congressman's offices. We've got to go and do sustained campaigns, not just these little one off things that burn off energy from the movement. We've got to go and do this stuff united. Too much you or you, oh, you're a Democrat. Oh, you're a Green. Oh, you're a Bernie crap, whatever. I don't give two shits about that. I don't care at all. And nor should you. Look, if you want a new deal, that's what you should be talking about, right? I mean, all these wars that are getting ready to crop up, I hate to break it to you. There's nefarious bullshit going on constantly. Until we, the people, really stand up and rise up, it doesn't matter how many social media posts you put out there. It really doesn't. The same 50 people that are following you on Facebook will see the same 50 things. That's it. That's it. You, you, so you got your same 50 people hitting like and you get this little shot of heroin. Oh, it feels so good to get so many likes. It's not changing anything. The people must be educated as to what it is they want. The people must be educated as to what is possible. And then the people must unite and make that happen. That is why we talk so much about economics, because if the people understand, they will unite. Once that light bulb goes off, they will unite because you start seeing why all these problems are happening. You start seeing what they've done to pervert society with this idea that we're broke. You start realizing exactly the tools of the enemy. And you start realizing how they keep us fighting each other. And this is why I'm telling you, we've got to educate each other outside the parties. I'm going to tell you something. This is probably going to piss some people off, but fancy that I don't give a fuck anymore. I really don't. But there are people that would have liked me to stay back in the background. They would have liked me to shut up. They would like me not to be me because they don't like my style. They don't like my fucking style. They don't like the words I say. They don't like my eyebrows. They think I'm authoritarian. Whatever. I'm just me. I'm a dad. I'm a human being. I'm a voter. I'm a son. I'm a guy that believes in something and people choose to either listen or they don't listen. That's it. And I have never allowed somebody to hold me back a day in my life. You understand me? I have never let somebody who thought I should wait my turn... Or just, hey, why don't you be quiet and let the others talk? They're free to talk. I'm not stopping anybody from talking. But the problem is, is that people don't do this. For a long time, people have chosen to be colloquial and, and, and very, very congenial with one another. Very, very gentlemanly like, right? And where has that gotten us? People are not paying attention still because they don't think that people are strong enough to rise up and do the right things. So they start checking out. My role in this movement, if you will, 
has been to throw some dynamite into the lake and watch the fish rise to the top and hope that people scoop the fish out with a big old net and teach them modern monetary theory. It has been to push them to understand that we can have nice things. It's been to push them to demand better instead of accepting crumbs at the table. Politicians will not do this for you. They will not. You must demand it. You must take it from them. You must absolutely demand that they serve our needs. But if you're willy-nilly and you don't really understand and it's all above your head, you're not going to be full of conviction about this. You're not going to be able to go out and demand. The military is the employer of last resort right now. So all of our young kids that don't go to college end up going to the military. And what does our military do? Our military bombs people. Our military is bombing the shit out of people for freedom. All around the world, it's being used as a tool. Now, because people can't understand why the fuck we're in war constantly, they start creating new narratives. And those new narratives take on other new narratives. And then all of a sudden, we're distracted once again. But the military is used as an economic stimulus, okay? The military is used because it's the one place the government can spend that the vast majority of people will say, oh, I'll be a bad patriot if I don't support this. So they know that they can spend on the military all day long. $800 billion this year, why not? And it's all to keep the economy from going in the toilet. But there's a better way, isn't there? There is a better way. There's a better employer of last resort. You don't hear people say, well, shit, if we bring a bunch of guys into the military, won't that cause inflation? You don't see that. But the minute you tell somebody you want a federal job guarantee, they go, what about inflation? What are you going to do, print more money? Well, how about we just throw them in the fucking military, dude? You don't like to have a federal job guarantee? Well, let's just all make them killing machines. There's always more killing to do. God damn, we can kill a bunch more people. Let's just throw them the fuck in the military. Isn't that what you want? You don't, you don't want a federal job guarantee because you're too cool. You would much rather keep the military as the employer of last resort, right? Oh, you hate wars. Oh, you, you don't you want to cut military spending. Really? And you don't want a federal job guarantee. So you want the economy to completely tank. Got it. Oh, you don't oh, so I get it. I get it. You don't really know how this works, so you're just saying things. The uneducated, angry person just saying things. And that, that is what's happening now. Our military is going out there to secure access to geopolitical influence, whether it be for oil, whether it be for other raw materials, whether it be for trade routes, whatever it is, ultimately, it's the employer of last resort. The military. You want to end wars. You don't want Trump doing this. You don't want Clinton doing that. You don't want somebody else doing this. You got to do better. And the only way we're going to do better is if we teach each other. If we teach each other how to do this and then outside these parties, take it to the streets, take it to the town halls, take it to the media, take it to the freaking uh, Congress. Sit down, occupy Congress. I mean, I haven't seen any of that. But then again, I'm fearful of many of the people that have the power to pull off these massive movements are not people that share the proper message. They don't share a proper economic message. They don't understand. They're angry. They're just saying things. They just want to do things. You want to stem the tide. You want to fix this. It's got to happen with we the people outside the parties. The parties are going to taint you.
They're going to distract you with this. No, the Democrats are bad. No, Green Party has got no prayer. What about these other parties? Well, they don't have anybody on the ballot. And that's your, that's your spin cycle right down the fucking toilet. Right down the toilet. Oh, we got to build a party. We got to build the parties. We got to do it. You hit the flush button. You doing the quick flush, which is quick, or you doing the real, the full flush, which is whoosh. That's what we're dealing with right now. It's very important, extremely important that we, the people, those of you out here who understand the message of real progressives, you need to be a rogue strain of truth going into DSA, going into the Green Party, going into the Democratic Party, going into the Republican Party, going into the Libertarian Party, infecting your churches, infecting your local nonprofits, infecting your school board, infecting everything. You guys need to be the message carrier. You need to be the one that didn't take the vaccine of ignorance and go in there with full metal truth and spread it. Spread the disease of truth. Otherwise, the people are just going to sit there fat and happy watching Tom and Jerry on TV or better yet, Real Housewives of some fucked up place. And they're not going to actually do anything because they don't think they can. Prove them wrong. Show them that they can. Show them that they can. And we can win. That, to me, is literally our only hope. Putting it into the parties, these people, well, you don't understand the local policy. You know, the party bosses, if we just do this, we can overtake and we can dem enter, we can, we can take over the party. We can... You're wasting so goddamn much time. Every one of those people, including Republicans, are going to look through the slats in their windows going, holy shit, how many of them are out there? Hey, dude, there's fucking a three million people out in front of our office. Holy shit. They said they want a federal job guarantee. And they want Medicare for all. And they want student debt eradication. And they want green energy. Guys, come here quick. I'm afraid they're going to do something. That's what you need to be doing. This whole, I'm going to vote green, green enter, man. Vote blue no matter who. Vote for Summer. Vote for Pedro. I don't give a fuck. If you don't have the strength, remember this, even the best politicians, if the politicians don't have the people pushing for the policies, they're not going to happen. They're not going to happen. With that, my name is Steve Grumbine. I am with Real Progressives. And I hope you guys have a great night. But please remember, it's in our hands. Fuck the parties. Make it so. Have a good night, everybody.